Hi, I'm Krista Jacobson, headmistress of the Buddha Dukai, where we teach authentic ninjutsu and classical samurai bujutsu. And for those of you who don't know what that is, those are the ancient martial arts of the ninja and samurai. Today is a beautiful day and I'm out for a walk and I thought I would share some of my thoughts in the martial arts with all of you guys. Uh, today's topic in this video is going to be Bushido, uh, the way of the warrior. Now I've made many videos on the topic of Bushido and the way of the warrior and how you should hold yourself and being respectful and honorable and all that, those types of things that all related to the code of Bushido. Today we're going to kind of look at it from a different angle. And um, it's going to be a little bit of random thoughts, but they all connect to this, this idea of Bushido. And um, it's, it's specifically going to be for like how a martial arts student should understand Bushido, how a martial arts student should understand their relationship with the martial art that they study, how a martial arts student should understand the relationship with their teacher, uh, how a martial arts student should understand what they get and derive from their martial arts training and from their teacher, and how they can take those lessons and apply it to their life in an honorable and respectful way. And um, that's something that we're going to be discussing. There are a few other topics that are going to be kind of thrown in here. That's why I mean this could be a little bit of a random thought video. Um, but I'm not quite for sure where the random thoughts are going to be yet. Anyone who watches my videos know that I usually go off the beaten path and talk about other things and then bring it on back before we always end the particular walk. But um, before I begin, I just want to say that uh, uh, if you guys are interested in authentic uh, ninjutsu or classical samurai bujutsu, so the Koru arts of Japan, the ancient martial arts of the ninja and samurai, um, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to click the bell. That way you guys can get the updates. You can get notifications every time I put up a video. I do put up two to three videos a week so you guys can get my random thoughts on the martial arts and so on and so forth. So here we go. Bushido, the way of the samurai, or the way of the warrior, right? Now I think everyone at some level, if you're in the martial arts, you've heard the idea of what that is. And what I'm not gonna do is, I'm not gonna really get into, you know, how old the term is and the history of the word and all that kind of thing. And I'll, we're not gonna get into that in this particular video. I've discussed that in other videos. So I'm just gonna say, if anyone starts talking about, you know, the etymology of that particular word, Bushido, let it go, put it on a video where it counts. Go to the other videos that I've made on Bushido and uh, you guys can, uh, have put your post up your opinions and comments there right today we're going to be talking about taking those concepts and how a martial arts student or supporter can use that being a martial arts student finding an actual master someone who you can literally you, you want to you're saying please teach me please influence my life please give me something that i feel will make me better will make me a better person i want to learn how to protect myself and protect my family and be a better person and all these sorts of things. I mean, that is a very intimate and special relationship. And that's something that should not be taken lightly at all. So being a martial arts student and being a martial arts teacher, that teacher-student relationship is a very sacred thing. And it should be. And if your teachers, whoever you're training with, doesn't take it as such, take it as special and sacred, then you, you might be with the wrong teacher. I just want to throw that out at you, okay? Because I know that I don't care whether my students are in one of the Hanbu Dojo or if they're a student in one of my other schools, or one of my student schools, or if they're like in the online Ninjutsu Dojo, I will always pick up the phone and talk to all my students and help everyone as much as I can. I believe that it's a very special and sacred thing when you're learning from someone in a martial art. 90% of the martial arts students and 90% of the martial art teachers out there, they, they do not approach it as it's something that's supposed to be sacred. They don't. They approach it as a business. They approach it as, you know what, here's a level. If you can get this level, I'll give you some rank. You pay me this much every month, that's it. It's cattle call, right? Look, you're on the black belt program, so you pay me every month and you do this. Or if you teach my kids classes and you do this, then I'll do this for you. You scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. And most martial arts schools are kind of like that. And that's what I mean by you got to be careful of, you know, who are you aligning yourself with and what teacher do you choose and which martial art do you choose and so on and so forth. Because people can easily get wrapped up in bullshit and they don't even know they're in the bullshit. Let's go back. Let's, I want to paint a picture. Let's go back to, I want to paint a picture. And this is complete fantasy here. But we're back in the feudal era of Japan and the samurai clan and the lord, he comes out. He sits down and let's pretend that he's in front of everybody. He's in Seiza and he's all geared up and he looks out and he says, he's got his top, 
spies over here, his top ninja over here. He's got his samurai and he's got his, over here he's got his top officials who are working strategies and maybe his Monomi and scouts and everyone. He's gonna have a meeting with his top people, right? And he's like, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take over the whatever domain and we're gonna go after this castle and we need to devise a plan. And he's telling them what he thinks and da 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 da. So, you know, he's got his shinobi on one side being like, yep, yep, we're gonna get the information. We're gonna go over to this prefecture and we're gonna get the information we need so we can carry this out. And the, and the samurai or the, the conventional soldiers are gonna be like, all right, yeah, we're gonna, this is how, they, they have this many troops and they're known for having this many guns and this and this. and we can do this on the field of battle and you've got your scouts and they're already going to know the lay of the land and you know, all these things going on in this big meeting, right? All of them in that whole meeting is 100% dedicated to the same fucking goal. They're all dedicated to serving their Lord, whoever that Lord is and whoever that, that person is, to make sure that that family clan, that that tradition, that that school, that, that whatever can be victorious. That is their sole purpose. Their sole purpose isn't to be like, okay, well, I'm gonna serve this Lord, and then I'm gonna go serve that Lord, and then I'm gonna go serve that Lord. So when we talk about the ancient ways of the samurai, the way of the warrior, when they talk about honor and respect and loyalty, they mean that shit to the death. Because if you were doing something backstabby, your ass would fucking die. I can promise you, let's, let's talk about Miyamoto Masashi. Do you think at any time in Miyamoto Masashi's life, he's gonna be like, yeah, I'm gonna go take on this sword school over here. I need to stop learning the sword stuff that I'm doing so I can learn their sword stuff so I could beat them. No, fuck no. He literally just like, fuck that shit. I train in swordsmanship and I challenge you. You think Miyamoto Masashi, there was one time where he had to go up against a person that had a, was a master of the Kasarigama, which is a sickle and chain. Do you really think Miyamoto Masashi was like, yeah, I gotta go and fucking study the, I gotta go become a master of the sickle and chain because I'm gonna go fight someone that has a sickle and a chain, right? Uh, a Kasarigama. And uh, no, fuck no, he wouldn't do that. He is like, I study the way of the sword. I'm gonna whoop your fucking ass. I'm so good, I'm gonna whoop your fucking ass. There was none of that kind of crap. You didn't see like, you know, samurai, let's say Bob, Bob's a samurai, right? And Bob's like, yeah, I study the martial arts of the blah, blah, blah but I think I need to go study the martial arts of, I need to go do Krav Maga too, or whatever, I'm coming up with some shit. No, that never fucking happened. What they did was they studied their martial arts and they wanted to make sure that their martial arts was so, they mastered it and refined it to a level that no matter what their opponent did, they had an answer for it. They wanted to make sure that what they did was so good that it didn't matter what they do, yeah. But today, people think backwards. See, we live in a world of we live in a world of like the internet and knowledge, and everyone wants to input, input, input. I want to watch videos on Taekwondo and Hapkido and Karate and Judo and Taekwondo and Jeet Kune Do and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and the fuck, the fuck, right? They don't master shit. They just input, 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 input. But the reality of it is, what people should be doing if they're going to master martial art correctly is they should be watching the other videos, not because they're interested in doing Jeet Kune Do or Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or whatever. They should be seeing that so they could devise a strategy to beat it with their own martial art. That's how you master the martial arts. Miyamoto Musashi knew swordsmanship. One of his greatest fights, I believe, was against Kichiro. He was a, was a sword master who owned, who was a master of the long sword. Musashi paddles over on a boat and he whittles out a wooden sword that's longer than the sword of what the guy was used to using. He was, that particular guy was always used to having the longer weapon. He always used length to his advantage. Did Musashi learn new techniques? No. Then Musashi was like, I gotta practice the way of the long sword, the longer sword, whatever, right? No, fuck no. He's like, you know what? I'm just gonna take away his advantage. My training's good enough. I'm gonna whittle a fucking sword out of this ore and then I'm gonna go beat his ass. That's the thing where we talk about honor when it comes to students. A martial arts student should look, if whatever martial art you choose, choose. You choose the best martial art for you. I'm not gonna sit here and be like, what's the greatest martial art ever? That's every, I did make a video on that and my thing is, whatever you choose is you. Choose the best one for you. But whatever you choose, 
dedicate yourself to it and get it the fuck done. Don't sit there and like pretend that you have to go off and do all this stuff. What you should do when you look at other martial arts, whether it's Krav Maga or Sistema or you know, uh, some more of the forms of Kodoru or whatever it is, right? It doesn't matter. Karate, Do, Aikido, Kendo, whatever. You're watching these other arts. You should look at that and be like, okay, if these are the, if this is what they do, what we do, we would use these techniques to counter that. And then, when you work your shadow boxing and your solo training, I'm a huge advocate for solo training. I have even made videos on solo training, so check those out. Solo training part one and part two. Great videos, guys, for those of you guys who want to learn with that. You should be studying, the, you should be looking at their movements so that you understand if I ever had to go against someone who is trained in this, or tra then I would use these type of movements. But you don't need to, you don't need to go off the beaten path of that because once you do that, you start cheapening the martial art. Here's a fun fact for you guys. The martial art itself isn't the one that makes the mistakes, the person is. So the person has to refine their skills to be good at the martial art that they choose. So whether you guys, like I study, I teach ninjutsu. It doesn't matter what ninjutsu organization you guys are with. Whatever organization you're with, whatever they're doing, do it. Dedicate yourself to that. But being a martial arts student is understanding that you have to have loyalty towards what it is that you do. It's not just your teacher. It's also the loyalty to the art. So if you look at it like, okay, I'm studying in our school. We have Tenjin Ryu Jiu Jitsu. One of our, our, one of our schools, our seven traditions, is called Tenjin Ryu Jiu Jitsu. So if you're studying Tenjin Ryu Jiu Jitsu here at the Buddha Yukai, and then a student's like, yeah, I'm gonna go off and do this too, which is another form of some form of Jiu Jitsu or grappling, then don't expect for the art that you're learning to, you've already muddied the water. It's not gonna, you're not gonna be as good. It's kinda like a computer. When you have a computer, when you first get it, it's really good. But then you start putting files on it and you start saving files and start saving videos and all this kind of shit and pictures and you put download shit and all that. Then it starts running slower. The more files and the more bullshit on your computer, the slower the computer runs. That's the way your skills are. You want to make sure that your skill set is so clean, so pure that you don't have to sit there and be like, well, I've studied five different forms of empty handed combat. So do I do this inward block? 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 Fuck. You know what I mean? I mean, inward block, every inward block and in every martial art that you choose is for the same purpose. There it is. So you want to dedicate yourself to whatever it is so that you can have that purity and that, I want, I'm using the word purity, but that, that is the wrong word. I, I, that is the wrong word. Um, you want to be able to be uh, refined. You want to be so good at what you do that there's no hold back. There's no, you know, like the computer running slow. They do this, you do this. Because you've already, you, you've went through that skill set so many hundreds of thousands of times. The problem is so many people are not honorable. They're not respectful. They're not loyal to their teacher. They're not loyal to their organization. They're not loyal to the arts that they claim to have a good relationship with. And then they fail because they're muddy in the water by doing all this other stupid shit. And in the time of the, of the samurai, like we were talking earlier, it's a very important. It, I mean, it was literally life or death. Like you had to know what you were doing and they had to know what you were doing because someone else's line, life depended on it. Now, let me just tell you guys something. I know this is like, I don't know, what's the word? Uh, might be a, uh, you know, it might be something that, you know, a no, a no shit was a, right? A, a no shit, but um, your life does depend on your training. Don't let anyone shit you any differently. Most people study martial arts and they study it because they want to have some skill set in self-defense. Or if shit hit the fan, I'm going to do this, right? You have a family, you got kids and all this kind of stuff. If you're not training in a way, if you're not training in a school that's going to help you have those skills, why? If you're not doing what you want to do with martial arts, then you need to go to a different martial art, right? But you need to go to one that's going to give you what you want. If you are at a school that gives you what you want, then you need to give yourself to that art. That way you can master what it is that you do. Because in the moment that you have to protect yourself, we're talking seconds, you have to have refined your skills so good that when someone pulls a knife on your throat, pulls a gun, multiple attackers, act active shooter situation, you got to know what to do, how to do it, when to do it, and make sure that it's done very fucking efficient. If you're trying to study, say, martial art A, and then you're on, you're on YouTube basically, you know, cheating on your martial art, looking at all this other shit, right? 
and you're doing all this other stuff, well, what ends up happening is you're muddying the water. You should be refining your skills. You should be dedicating yourself to that and being really good at that because that's what's gonna save your ass. I'm not gonna sit there and like bullshit people and be like, oh yeah, you know, you should do this and this or do this and this. I studied a shit ton of different martial arts and I'll tell you right now that in, in our school we have seven different arts and all seven have a different aspect of training. So we've got hand-to-hand -hand combat, we've got grappling, we've got weapons, etc. survival skills, you know, situational awareness, firearms, etc. That's our school. Some schools aren't that diversified in the variety of techniques and skill sets that they have. We are a very, we're a school that as a variety of skill sets and extremely diversifies in many different areas of martial arts. But some people don't want that. Some people don't want to learn weapons and all this kind of shit. They just want to learn how to punch and kick. Okay, so my point is, whatever martial art you choose, do that. But you need to make sure that you're doing it with honor, respect, dignity, and loyalty. You can't sit there and say, I'm going to be dedicated and honorable to this person and then go off and do something else and then start talking shit on the art that was the one that was supposed that was the one that was probably helping you out the most. You know, there's no honor in that. When you're lying to people constantly, there's no honor in that. You should be taking what it is that you do and making it as best as you can. So it doesn't matter whether you guys are doing Kenpo or Karate or Aikido or whatever it is you're doing, do it. Dedicate yourself to that. I'm telling you right now through experience, you're gonna be much better if you just dedicate yourself to what the fuck you're doing than going off the beaten path and doing five, 10 other things. Through experience, I'm telling you that because I did that. I went off and did different shit when I was way younger. And 20 years ago, 20 plus years ago and I found that that is not the best thing to do because it does muddy the water and you got to constantly start you got to constantly reprogram muscle memory but that's not what you want to do you want to have muscle memory so quick that when it happens it's done bang done so when people do that kind of stuff different teachers have different philosophies and way of teaching like for me even though I'm teaching at the Buddha Yukai and we have seven different arts the way that I teach and the way that I do things is still gonna have its same base principle doesn't matter which one of the seven different disciplines that I'm teaching whereas someone who say you're gonna go say you're gonna do boxing over here and then wrestling over here those are two different coaches and the coaches are gonna have a different philosophy in the way that they do things that philosophy does have an imprint on the way that you think about how you fight and when you do that that does start slowing down the computer because you got too many files on how you approach certain shit. The way that I approach combat, whether it doesn't matter whether we're doing Kokoro Kempo or Tenjin Ru Jujutsu or whatever different of the seven different disciplines or traditions that we have, the way that I do things, the way that I approach violence and the way that I approach self-protection is going to be the same. The martial art is just a different tool that we use to approach or defend ourselves versus violence. Different teachers have different outlooks and different ways of doing that. So when you're going to teacher A and then teacher B and they're two different martial arts, you have too many files going up there and you can't blame that teacher or that art or that teacher or that art when you get fucking shot because you weren't the one that was refining a skill. You're dipping your feet into too many different things. So when you're studying something from your teacher and you and you're as a martial arts student, you're trying to say, okay, I'm gonna live my life in a way that's gonna be very honorable and respectful and, and have loyalty and integrity to my school, then you need to study those arts and give yourself to those arts and be respectful to those arts. You also need to be respectful and give yourself to whatever, the, whatever teacher it is that you have. Be respectful of your teacher because they're giving you something that's very sacred to them. Like, it always pisses me off and I have people that's like, hey, I study this and this and this, I wanna come over and train with you. It's like, do you, they don't understand like how I am a, like a samurai and ninja nut, like a self-defense nut. Like I love what I do so much and when someone like automatically comes in with the mindset of I just wanna take what I think is good and leave the rest, I don't wanna teach them because I got nothing for them. So now I had someone say one time, I can be pro you and pro someone else and not be anti either one. Well that all depends on how one or one is. Like an example, let's say that I had somebody who did me wrong, right? and they stabbed me in the back and they completely fucked me over. If you're gonna study martial arts from me and then you study martial arts from Bob and Bob is the one that kind of fucked me over, you're gonna go over to some dude and bow down to him. Get on your knees and bow down and show him respect and then come over here and ask me to teach you something that is sacred to my heart, I got nothing for you. Sorry, shit ain't gonna happen. I mean, it's, to me, it, there's no line with that. And I think that, and maybe it's because I study classical Japanese martial arts, right? Because it's like in the ancient ways of the ninja and samurai, it's like, you, this is it, you know what I mean? And maybe it's true, I don't know, who knows? 
But to me, honor, respect, dignity, loyalty, being able to share something with your students and, and knowing that your students are going to take that lesson and they're going to apply it to their life to make themselves a better person. To me, that's very important, very sacred, and very special. And I want my students to not just you know, take the lessons and be great martial artists because being able to whoop somebody's ass doesn't take a lot of talent. That doesn't mean you're a very good martial artist. It makes you a good fighter. I want my students to refine their skills in the martial arts to be able to protect themselves and ones they love. I want my students to be able to get into an organization and do whatever it is that they want to do with their life to be the best them that they can. And as long as you're not hurting anybody or hurting anything, I'll support you. I want my students to be them, literally. Hashtag be you, hashtag live life. Whatever it is that makes you you, do it. Don't be ashamed of who you are. Be who you are, live your life. Again, as long as you're not hurting anybody, you're not gonna get much static from me at all. Just be you. But at the end of the day, you can't be an asshole. So if you're getting on the internet and you're making fun of people and you're dogging people out and saying, oh, this person's a fake or fraud or this person's this or this person's that, that's bad. If you're doing that, you're gonna be gone. I got nothing for you. I don't want people that are hateful and I have no problem with people voicing their opinion. That's fine, like I say, I don't think students like this or teachers like this, but I don't, I'm not gonna make a video about a specific individual. You know what I mean? You don't attack people. If you stand against a cause, that's fine. You stand against certain organizations that do certain things, well then fine, voice your opinions about those things. But you don't have to be hateful towards people. You don't have to be negative towards people. You don't have to tear people down. So I'm saying, I don't, I don't, I'm not the kind of organization that's gonna give eight-year-old black belts and 15th degree black belts to people who are like big old overweight, out of shape, couldn't fight themselves out of a wet paper bag and have a heart attack if they had to run outside the goddamn house because it's on fire. I'm not gonna do that. This is no fucking way. If you ain't got the skill set, you ain't got the skill set. You don't deserve the fucking rank. I'm not gonna give a black belt to someone who calls me up on a fucking phone and like one year later they get a black belt. That ain't gonna fucking happen. I stand against that type of shit. Now, am I gonna say this organization does that or this person does that? No, not at all. But let me tell you something else I'm not gonna do. I'm not gonna sit there and teach people who I know support people who fuck me over or fuck this organization over or I'm not gonna teach people who I know go behind my back or go behind the organization to be cool with people like that. Because I don't think, I don't, I think people should stand for something. There's an old saying, right? You stand for something or you fall for anything. Uh, absolute, absolutely. And you know, there's so many people nowadays, all they give a shit about is themselves, their pocketbook. What can make them more money? You know, who can they be cool with? How can they do this and, 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 and get something from it? All right, well, if you want to be selfish, go on with it. You know, it's like, like, the, like it's about the individual, like, oh, I can learn from you and learn from him and blah, blah, blah. Well, that's selfish. You're doing what you think is best for you. You're definitely not showing any respect or honor or anything to the art and the tradition and the school and the organization, right? No matter how you shake that stick or want to deep thought that fucking statement, that is an absolute truth, what I just said. There's so many people in the fucking world that are so hateful. There's so much hate and bullshit and lying and betraying and political crap every fucking day. There should be one community, you would think that it would be the religious people that should step up and be good people. But fuck, we've seen through history that ain't true. So what other community should it be? It should be the martial arts community. It should be whatever martial art that you do, do it. Be honorable, be respectful, don't tear the people down. You know what I mean? Help the people you can help. Extend your hand when you can extend your hand. That's another problem of today. People just don't do that anymore. All that, it's very selfish. So I'm not for sure what you guys got out of this lesson, but hopefully you can understand the essence was the way of the warrior. Having respect and honor and integrity is a good thing. And not thinking about yourself and how you can learn from this one and that one and, oh, I'll be good to you and da-da-da, and I can turn, you know, no. That's you. Having respect towards something and dedicate yourself towards something is more important because then you have a sense of integrity and honor, respect. Yeah. So here we go, here's my outro. If you guys are interested in authentic ninjutsu and classical samurai bujutsu, and uh, you would like to learn the ancient ways of the ninja and samurai, please check out my website at www.budodininjutsu.com. There you can see a list of our schools. If you don't live next to one of our schools, you can um, join the online ninjutsu dojo and train with me that way. And uh, yeah, if you guys are interested in uh, Japanese martial arts, 
reality-based self-defense, martial arts, philosophy, thoughts, random thoughts like this. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, click the bell, that way you guys can get the notification on all my future videos. I get up two to three a week, and uh, we'll go from there. So thank you guys very much for your love and support.